At the beginning of every procedure, I typically try to close my eyes and visualize my breath in through the nose, then all around the sinuses, first the maxilla, uh, then the ethmoid, then the frontal. I, I visualize the breath going from my trachea down to the lungs. I got sent back. It wasn't my time. I went too soon. Too soon, Dr. Wilson. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon, babe. <laughs> Came in last night, nearly collapsed. Severe abdominal pain, which has since spread to her chest. Fever, muscle soreness. I thought ischemic process, but it doesn't fit her history. We've considered gastritis, cirrhosis of the liver, TB, hepatitis. Did you order a differential? I did, and it doesn't look good. Her white blood cell count is spiking, and at this point, we're stumped. I, I realize that you're not an internist, but on the chance you've got another diagnostic rabbit you could pull out of your hat. Call Gato. The trauma chief? You want to find out what's wrong with this woman? Call Gato. I don't understand. Need surgery. I understand, and my decision is not to have the surgery. Not do, dead. Need surgery. She's thought a lot about this, doctor. She understands the risk. She's 13. Look at picture. Hmm? Broken eyes, but growing. I've seen the scan, and no offense, but I probably know more about brainstem gliomas by now than most neurosurgeons. If I have the procedure, the likelihood is you won't be able to get Chance it all. will. In which case, I will get chemo, radiation, and the drugs would wreck my brain, my Look, organs. Surgery is only. I've had surgery. Need again. No. <sighs> I'm tired. Enough is enough. Not do, dead. Gato. Well, he stepped out for a minute. He'll be back any second. You, you're a neuro resident? Yes, sir. I need you to pronounce this man dead. Quickly, please. I beg your pardon? Gunshot to the head. He's got an organ donor card. We need to pronounce him brain dead. Uh, this man is not my patient. He's nobody's patient at this point. He's a donor whose organs I cannot harvest until you pronounce him brain dead. Well, can't you? No, I cannot. The transplant surgeon is not permitted to do the final. Could you get on with it, please? I've got a man waiting for this heart. Sir? Sir, I'm Dr. Robodeau. Uh, can you open your... I? Oh, great. Can you hear me, sir? Could be that he's a poor listener or that uh, he doesn't have a head. <laughs> Mr. Jasper. Gavin Jasper. Where the hell is Gatto? Uh, pupils fixed and... Uh, dilated. No response to pain stimulus. Mr. Jasper, if you can hear me, could you take my hand? Come on. <gasps> That's brainstem reflex. A reflex? Are you kidding me? Uh, Mr. Jasper, hold up a finger, please. <laughs> Would you like me to second that motion?
Miss Gonzalez, I'm Dr. Villanueva. How are you feeling? Oh, oh. Do you like to cook? Yes. Do you make linguiza chorizo? Yes. Ah. The other day. Ah, muy bueno. Trigonosis. I beg your pardon. Well, see the little cut on her finger? She probably touched the seasoning on the raw pork. This lady's got worms. Damn. You owe her 200 bucks. Right, let's get started, shall we? Uh, first, a very good Monday morning to all of you. Dr. Ridgway, please join us on stage. Now, I have here the file on Francine Cash. Would you do the honors? Okay. Francine Cash arrived at Chelsea General on October 23rd with a meningioma. Procedure to remove the tumor was scheduled and performed on the 26th. Procedure seemingly went well with no incident. Seemingly? Uh, would you walk us through it, please, Doctor? Certainly. After I... Actually, before we get to that, um, I assume Miss Cash was informed as to the risks of the surgery and she consented to it? Of course. Excellent. Uh, what were those risks, Doctor? There were several. Uh, bleeding, infection, stroke, possible damage to the olfactory nerve, which ran proximate to the growth. Yes, that one. Let's talk about that risk, Doctor. Well, should the olfactory nerve be either nicked or cut, the patient could lose her sense of smell. The patient was told this? Yes. Did you personally tell her? That would have been the responsibility of the resident to go over the risks with the patient and have the patient sign the consent form. So personally, you have no idea what risks, if any, Francine Cash was made aware of before the surgery? We could ask the resident. And who would that be? Michelle Robodeau. Excellent. But before we get to Dr. Robodeau, once again, do you have any direct personal knowledge of what risks that Francine Cash was told about before the surgery? No, I did not personally hear what Francine Cash was told before her surgery. Mm. Uh, please walk us through the procedure, Doctor. Mm -hmm. After the patient's head was immobilized, an incision was made on the scalp and the skull was exposed. Entry to the brain was made through a burr hole behind Ms. Cash's right eye. And there it was a matter of gently cutting away the outer layers of the brain and then resecting the tumor. Hmm. No, you describe it very well. Do you know, I could almost... I could almost visualize you doing it. Did you do the surgery, Dr. Ridgway? No. No? Who was operating? Dr. Robodeau. Dr. Robodeau? You allowed a doctor in training to operate on this young woman's brain. Dr. Robodeau is an extremely competent neuroresident. And Francine Cash was someone she could practice on? Oh, come on. Well, well, how is it that Dr. Robodeau was chosen to operate on Miss Cash? That was my decision. Ah. The decision I made because she was perfectly capable of handling a meningioma. She'd performed the procedure before? Yeah, she's assisted me dozens of times. How many times had she performed this procedure on her own before cutting into this patient? None. So you thought she could just try her hand on Francine Cash? That's what a teaching hospital is. No one hatches from an egg as a polished surgeon. Dr. Robert is a better doctor for having done this procedure, a better surgeon for the scores of others she'll treat in the years to come, and you know that. Thank you. How does that inure to benefit Francine Cash? By the way, what does Francine Cash do for a living? She, she was a chef. She was a chef. 
A chef would quite need a sense of smell, wouldn't she, Dr. Ridgway? Comments? Ninety-nine out of a hundred patients would dismiss the potential side effects without a second thought. Compared to a tumor growing in his or her brain, that loss of smell would, I suspect, mean very little. But when dealing with a patient whose olfactory nerve is inextricably linked with who she is, then perhaps the surgeon would do best to go over those risks personally with the patient, instead of turfing the duty to a resident. Perhaps that surgeon might even do the procedure instead of handing the scalpel to a doctor in training who has never performed it before. Or am I out of line, Dr. Ridgway? You'll go in through my nose? It's called endoscopic transnasal brain surgery. I'll be threading an endoscope and miniature tools up your nose. I won't be looking directly at the tumor. Rather, I'll be watching a TV monitor using computer mapping. And I'm sorry, are you any good? Th that's probably an offensive question. Sandy, I'm about to go into your brain. It's not an offensive question. In fact, it's the first question you should be asking and the one that patients never do. Probably because we just assume you to be infallible. Did I say something wrong? What? No. No. You actually hallucinated? I guess I did. I thought I saw Allison McDaniel standing there. I heard her voice. Dr. Ridgeway! Harding, you mind telling me what that was about, really? We're instructed and encouraged to let residents do procedures if possible. That's what a teaching hospital is. Uh, are, are these Monday morning things really to make us better surgeons, or do they just exist to establish you as the almighty in chief? Because I'm not sure what good came out of that inquisition. Well, I suspect you might be better prepared should the questions I asked be put to you by Francine Cash's attorney, which they will be. We're being sued. It's the notice of your deposition. Need consult. Well, it's clearly got to come out. What I say? Patient refuse. She's 13 years old. Parents refuse too. Did you explain to them the consequences of not operating? Yes. Tell them. Not do dead. Tell. Not care. You explained it that eloquently, Sol. I find it difficult to imagine they're taking issue with not do dead. You such a good talker? You explain. I send to your office. Heart, lungs, liver, two kidneys, a cornea, it's all in play here. His skin, too, but not until he's clinically dead. So in the meantime, hold on. Gatto, gunshot to the head. Where do we stand? Mr. Jasper was pronounced dead four minutes ago. Ah, where is he? This is Mr. Jasper's mother. Mrs. Jasper, I'm so sorry for your loss. I... Oh, please forgive my insensitivity. I'm coordinating the transplant procedures, which uh... you might want to quit while you're behind. I'm getting sued. We're getting sued. I haven't even finished my residency. Michelle, doctors get sued every day, especially surgeons, whether we make a mistake or not. As long as lawyers like to heat their pools with med mal claims, as long as Congress refuses to get serious about tort reform, we will always, always be saddled up for nuisance claims, which is what this is. Thank you. For? For protecting me. Uh, for standing up like the big umbrella that you are at the M&M. So many surgeons would just throw the resident under the bus, but you are just this gigantic, big, generous umbrella. To Becky, your suction.
We need suture. Suction. Patricia, Dr. Hooten. That was impressive. Are your parents around? They went to the cafeteria, and it's my decision. How old are you, Tricia? Here we go. Look, in England, a 13-year-old named Hannah Jones decided to forego life-saving heart surgery. In Minnesota, a 12-year-old boy refused chemo for a treatable form of lymphoma. The courts have generally found a right in all persons to refuse treatment. I've done the research. How about the math? Without surgery, you'll die. Cool bedside. You play this thing? Mm -hmm. well, not as good as you. But then I have other attributes. One of them being a will to live. <laughs> really cool bedside. What do you play? When you play? I fancy Beethoven. <laughs> That's funny. Beethoven almost saved my life. How so? Sonata Pathétique. When I first heard this, I got this weird sensation that God was singing to me or thinking about me. Anyway, I told my mother I heard God in some sonata. Her mind went straight to a delusional disorder. One thing led to another then to a CAT scan, brain tumor. Well, then perhaps Beethoven saved your life after all, because now you're here. I'm here because my parents refuse to accept what every other hospital has told them. I'm gonna die, Dr. Hooten. No, we don't know that for sure. It's growing. Yeah, which is why we need to operate. You know, you don't strike me as a white flag waver. Do you really choose to die? I choose to live. Even if it's for a few months, I'd like to live without chemo, without being hooked up to wires. I'm writing an opera. Oh, I didn't know 13-year-olds did that anymore. There's also a boy. Our school has a Valentine's dance. He's gonna ask me, and I wanna go. And then there's my house, my bedroom, my family. I want to spend all the days I have left with the people I love, doing the things I... It may only seem like a few months to you. To me, it's a lifetime. I'd like to live it. Fifty, one seventy-five. You don't pay off a debt in gift cards. These are iTunes gift cards. They're more stable than the U.S. dollar, the euro. What's wrong with you? If you want to ask me out, just do it. What? Why? In God's name, would I ever want to ask you out? I don't know, and I don't care, but I'm busy. I have patience. If you want to have dinner, just ask. We're not in high school. Dinner? Which you'll pay for in cash. Not iTunes gift cards. You're going to let a 13-year-old make this decision? The medical opinion seems to support her analysis. I mean, her quality of life would be so... Hold on. If that tumor doesn't come out... Why is this doctor even here? Yeah, to successfully bully you since I failed. You spoke to Trisha. Is she wrong? Can you save her? I would say that if she can be saved, Dr. Park would be the man to do it. That doesn't answer my question. Mrs. Miller... I can maybe save her. Hmm? How will not try? How will not try? Hmm? 
We would love nothing more than to try, but we will not compound her suffering just to spare our own. She has been battling this for months, bravely, but... She's losing. Doctors, you just want to cut, cut, cut. Our daughter has earned her perspective. And we will respect her. If she gets nothing else. She'll get that. Hello? Hello? Mrs. McDaniels, this is Dr. Wilson from Chelsea General. Yes? I was wondering if I might meet with you. To be perfectly honest, I don't know. What exactly do you plan to say? I have no idea. <sighs> Ty, you gotta get some clarity on this. Because whatever you do say could have some very serious legal consequences. I've been having bad dreams. Nightmares. <sighs> I don't know what's going on. Honey, whatever you've lost, I don't think Quinn McDaniel's mother can give it back to you. I really think it's a mistake to see her. I said I'm worried about her. This is not like Ty. Can I ask you a personal question? No. No. I'm married. My personal life is to be kept secret, especially from me. Yeah. All right. How serious is this between you two? I'm not stupid. I know what's going on. Is this serious? I have no idea. You love him? I don't know. Maybe a little. I know. I'm such a stupid cliche. You okay? Michelle called me an umbrella. That's what Mark calls me sometimes. An umbrella, because I block the sun. Hey, you don't block any sun around here, lady. Thanks. Guess what? Dr. Lieberman asked me out. Really? I kind of made him. <laughs> yeah? Well, that's great. A little soon, though, don't you think? Probably, but... That kid with the glioma just reminds me life's so short, you know? Yeah. I like John Lieberman. <laughs> He's not too dorky, is he? No. He's just dorky enough. He did great. The new heart is beating, it's strong. The procedure was without complications. I could not be more confident. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. And you can see him in maybe three, four hours. Oh, bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, 
I see here? You're here. Where would you like for me to go? There is neither an apology nor an excuse to justify my earlier insensitivity. But if I might console you, there are six people who are living right now because of the extraordinary sacrifice made by your son. Of the organ recipients, one is a school teacher, one is a pediatrician, another is a biological engineering student, and the contributions that they can now make to society have only been made possible by your son's... I hear what you're saying. My son was a gang member who got shot in the head. My son was nothing. But because you harvested his organs and gave them to people who matter, now he matter. I hear what you're saying. You can go to hell, doctor. You can go straight to hell. You okay? Yeah. Yeah. Trisha, what I see in you, in addition to a young girl with a ferocious appetite for life, is a young woman willing to bet on herself. Now, I'm asking you to make that wager one more time, but on us in this process, because I promise you, we are that good. Dr. Hooten, I've seen the MRI. I've also had a taste of Dr. Big Shot here, and I have no desire to be used as his practice tea, just so he gets to make a hole in one someday. Do you know what deus ex machina means? Very bad writing in a Greek play. Essentially. An illogical, if not preposterous, resolution plucked from nowhere. Euripides' answer to a Hail Mary. Now, Aristotle would go with the MRI. I favor Euripides. Surprising, because I figured you to favor Hallmark. What have you got? Trisha, I can tell you this. I came into this equation thinking you didn't have the maturity to be making this decision. I take that back. You're a very smart girl. So smart, in fact, I'm gonna lay this on you. Medicine, science, often doesn't add up. There's so many inexplicable mysteries, like how behaviors like compassion and morality can be genetically based, how cells in the womb know how to migrate as the fetus develops. So many mysteries. One being your point? My point is, miracles. However unquantifiable, they do happen. Are the odds against you? Yeah. Is it game over? Hell no. I agree with him. Deus ex, uh, what was that? Machina. Yeah. Uh, Machina. And you, what have you got to say? Not do, dead. better be worth it. That's all I can say. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I think it looks rather good on you. <laughs> okay, we're all done. You want to see? No, thanks. I've seen it. Give it to me straight. How do I look? Bald. Hmm. This is why I like him. Just says it how it is. If I die, you're gonna cry. People die in this hospital every day. 
If I were to stop and shed a tear to every life we lost, we wouldn't get any work done. But if we lose you, Trisha, I shall cry. Because I think you suspect just how much you've managed to touch my heart. Which is why I so want to do this procedure. And why I so want the scalpel to be in the hands of this doctor here. And not to put too much pressure on him. He will save your life. And then the tears that I shall no doubt shed will be ones of pure joy. Do you believe in God? No God here. Oh, yes, there is. Hmm? He'll be in the operating room. I shall speak to him myself. And he listens to you? Yes. I'm chief of staff. I read that my chances improve if my outlook is positive. Is that true? Very much so. You want to do something to make me smile, then? Name it. What the hell have you gone and done? Well, I've always rather liked the look of your head, Gatter, so I thought I'd give it a try. I look good bald. You don't. Yeah, I do believe you're jealous. <laughs> have you glanced in the mirror? You look horrible. Seriously, why did you do this to yourself? She asked me to. Okay, I'd like you all to direct your attention to my head. And for the next few seconds, please indulge your misdirected delight at your peril. Good. Dr. Tierney, join me on stage, if you would. I figured. You've been very good. Dr. Tierney, a successful heart transplant performed personally by you. Hmm? You've also oversaw or coordinated other organ donations, thus furthering fruitfully the preservation of life. Very good indeed. You've also been very bad. Tell us how you've been bad, Dr. Tierney. I displayed a shocking insensitivity to the mother of the organ donor, for which there was absolutely no excuse. I am appalled uh, and embarrassed, and to the extent that my egregious conduct reflects poorly on this hospital, I apologize to each and every person in this room. That's all very admirable, but I refer not to your indecent behavior towards the mother, but rather your breach in protocol towards your donor. You notified three hospitals. You had four transplant teams deployed, six patients admitted to the hospital, and almost had operations started to remove organs. And all the while, your patient donor wasn't deceased. Did you personally examine Gavin Jasper, doctor? I did, and I determined incorrectly that he was brain dead. You determined incorrectly that he was brain dead. As oopsie daisies go, that's rather a big one, don't you think? Which is why, in compliance with transplant protocol, I asked the neuro resident, uh, 
her there to examine Mr. Jasper. Her there? Who's her there, Doctor? Um, I believe it's Dr. Ro... I... Robido. Uh, Dr. Robido, what did you find? Uh, well, at first, the patient appeared to be deceased, but while examining him, he responded to voice command. How do you mean? First, I asked him to take my hand, and he did, and then Dr. Tierney asked him to raise a finger. He was responsive? And reflective. <laughs> this is exciting stuff, this transplant business. I can imagine how you can hardly wait to get started sometimes. <laughs> You're such a predator, Buck. No. A vulture. No. Trawling around the ICU, scavenging to harvest organs. Not to be bothered with any such annoying little details like whether or not your donor is alive or dead. Shocking, egregious, appalling. These are your words, Buck. Do you think these words go far enough? I do my job. And I do it very well. For 20 years, I have run a transplant service that has made Chelsea one of the highest volume centers in the country. For every 10 minutes that goes by before an organ is transplanted, the risk of rejection escalates, as does the risk that the organ itself will fail. So I time things as perfectly and as precisely as I humanly can to keep our success rates high. There are over 115,000 people out there waiting for an organ, and in the last four months, fewer than 5,000 donors. Now, when things go well, Nobody stops to think that there were over 200 steps and precise points of coordination to make things work at this hospital. And I made things work for six people who are alive today because of my efforts, and I will not have you refer to me as a predator. I am not liked. God knows, even a patient missing half his head still managed to flip me off to everyone's great delight and entertainment. I get it, but I am not a predator. I am not a vulture. Exophytic, localized. Sorry, terminal nerve. Houston's nerve right there. Everybody quiet. About to go into brain stem. Quiet. Trisha. But what happened? Do, not dead. What name? Who you? Who me? I'm Trisha Miller. And you're Dr. Big Shot. You shaved. She's fine. Go get parents. 
make a hole in the head. I am. Um, I believe he meant to say he made a hole in one. 